In a world where trust and commitment are tested, a man faces the ultimate dilemma. Should he end his nearly decade-long engagement over a seemingly shocking request from his fiancée? As their wedding day approaches, his fiancée, an otherwise loving partner, reveals a surprising desire to sleep with another woman one last time before their marriage. This revelation shatters the man's carefully built dreams of a future together, thrusting him into a whirlwind of emotional turmoil. Torn between his commitment to a monotonous relationship and his fiancée's honest but heart-wrenching request, he must confront his deepest fears and past traumas. Will he stay true to his convictions and walk away from the love of his life, or will he find a way to reconcile his past with his future? This might be a long time. I'd. I'm feeling a lot. So me, 31 gay, and my fiancé, 30 twam bi, have been together for nine years, engaged for one. We're meant to get married in two months. My time with him has been perfect. I have literally zero complaints. Honestly, I didn't think I'd find someone who got me the way he did. Then the world remembered it hated me, and decided to fuck my shit up since I had it too good for too long. Last week, my fiancé sat me down and told me he wanted to discuss something with me and to keep an open mind. Sure. He said since we're getting married, he wanted to know if I would be okay with him having one night where he could sleep with a woman. My heart broke instantly. My dreams, hopes, and plans vanished in an instant, and the marriage I was eager to begin was dead. At the very beginning of our relationship, when he asked to be exclusive, I told him there would never be anyone else in our life. Just us. No one's coming into our bedroom. There will be no cock fantasies, no Eiffel Towers, nothing. I made it clear that if he ever asked me for anything of the sort, the relationship would be over immediately. There would be no conversation about it if it was done. He agreed. He said monogamy was the only thing for him, and he didn't want anyone else. Before I keep going, I want to explain why I am the way I am. I won't give a lot of details, actually almost none, but I'll give enough to understand, hopefully. Between the ages of 8 and 14, I was SAD a lot by my only friend at the time. When I was 8, he was 15. Only another kid on the street. My mother was a drug addict and cheated on my father constantly so she didn't notice anything. My dad was never home BC, his wife was awful to be around, and he was a kid who stayed in his room alone all the time so he wouldn't have seen anything to be concerned about anyway. I tried to tell my mother once, but I couldn't even say it before I was yelled at and told to get out of her room, and I never tried to bring it up again. Fast forward to me being a not-stupid child, I put pieces together and found out why my dad was never there to help me, why my mom didn't care enough to question why the horny teen was taking me outside for hours, and when I got home I just wanted to be alone in my room. I put all of my childhood issues into cheating, as a result of my fun, little, quirky younger years, I am borderline. I have anxiety and panic attacks whenever I hear people screaming and depression blah blah blah. I have problems. After being with my fiancé for about a year and a half, I talked to him about my past and why I feel the way I do about things, and he was very understanding. Very comforting. Despite it being my story. I had to wipe away his tears a few times. I know he cares for me, I know he loves me, and wants to spend our forever together. Back in the present day, I am in a hotel room alone. Everyone I've told this to has said I'm crazy and stupid and need therapy. They don't understand how I can throw it all away over my partner being honest and open with me about something. He didn't actually cheat. He just wanted to lol. He has said he won't do it. He needs me more than any feeling a woman can give him. I am his everything. He's called me twice since I started typing this and messaged me really sweet things, so I'm at a point where I don't know what I'm doing. I look at the future, and I see him. My entire adult life, I've had the mentality of, if they want to cheat, they will, so he's asking me now, and if I say no, he will eventually do it anyway but won't tell me next time. That is where my decision to leave comes from. He will grow to resent me for denying him this thing he wants. I don't want to be that person 30 years from now, finding out my husband has had 50 affairs during our marriage with a bunch of women. When I am with someone, I'm with them. 
I don't look at other people, I don't entertain advances anyone makes towards me. I don't flirt with anyone else. I'm devoted in every way. People are making me feel crazy for wanting the same energy given back to me. I can't wrap my head around him, wanting to kiss someone else, to be an inch away from them, and smile and then start fucking. I don't want to think about it but it's all I'm thinking about. It's been almost eight days since I left, and it's my only thought. I'm losing my mind in a shitty hotel room, thinking about the guy I love fucking some random woman who doesn't exist. I'm lost. I'd quit to do. I do want to say how amazing he is. He buys me flowers every Friday. He stands up for me when no one else does. He looks for me in every room. He makes me feel like I matter. He makes my grayest days bright and clear, and the smile I used to fake isn't fake anymore. He has never judged me for the things I do. He's never made me feel bad for having off days. He just makes me feel loved. My birthday was last month, and he made me a book filled with pictures of us he's taken over the years, with the last page being blank so he can add our wedding picture eventually. Above each picture was what he was thinking when he took it, and below is how he was feeling at the time. Part of being me is that I need constant reassurance that he loves me, so I ask him those things a lot. It means everything to me, and it's my favorite thing I own. I'm just trying to say he really is great despite this one thing. He said he'll do anything for me to come back. We can push the wedding back and just work on us. Or we can call it off completely and just be together. He will never bring it up again, and he's deeply sorry he ever wanted to do it, and I believe him. Time changes people, though. I just want an unbiased opinion from someone whose life will not change whatsoever by my decision. They tend to be more truthful. I love him, and when I look at pictures of him, I hear wedding bells, and I see the house he wants to buy with me, and the two kids he wants to adopt at some point. I don't want the rehashed, when trust is gone, it doesn't come back, or, you know the answer, leave. I do trust him. I don't trust the things I'm telling myself over and over about what may happen in the future. He has never given me a reason not to trust him, but I don't know. TLDR, my fiancé wants to fuck a woman again before marrying me forever. I left immediately because I don't condone cheating and have a colorful past. Everyone thinks I'm an asshole for leaving my partner of almost a decade for being open with me about his wants and feelings. Okay, I if anyone actually cares about the outcome, but my original plan was to talk to him today. Bring up therapy. Maybe I will go back to our apartment or just stay for the rest of my hotel reservation. That did not happen. I folded. I got dumped on Sunday night. He called me at about 10, 30-ish, and I told him where I was BC. He said he wanted to explain in person. Sober me would have said no say that shit over the phone. Trunk me is a hoe. He came over and started explaining, but honestly, he nailed me to a cross. I will die for the sins I know every single one of you would commit if you could see his face if we do shit. After that, he did explain. His best friend, who's always had issues with me, has been trying to convince him for months if he doesn't sleep with a woman again, he will end up cheating on me in the future. He didn't believe it at first, but after a few months, his friend wore him down. I know he's not lying. He showed me texts going back to February every so often, and his friend brought it up. His friend has always not liked me, I don't think he's okay with my fiancé being bi. The first time he introduced me to his friends, his best friend was very standoffish and didn't interact with me. At one point, someone asked if I was into hiking, I am, and she said, best friend's name, is also really into it. I said, that's cool. Do you know any good spots since I just moved here and haven't found any yet? He said no, and started talking to someone else. Okay. Sure. Dick. He has a bunch of other little shit over the years, like always bringing up his ex-GF in front of me, blah blah, you get the gist. I think he knew I'd leave if my fiancé asked me for this. My fiancé said he didn't want to do it, and he wanted me to say no, yes, a few of you told me to just say no, and he would agree and wouldn't congratulate, and we'd move on. Weddings are still on hold. I have the ring back. It's on a chain around my neck. I still want therapy with him. 
Too many of you convinced me in private DMS with your personal stories about how helpful it was in your relationships. You wore me down. I also want to know what a paid professional thinks about his best friend BC. Honestly, I'm done with him. I don't want him at my wedding. I won't want to see his face. I don't want him to be my fiancé's best man. Sorry to disappoint. I know a lot of you were calling for his head. I was in the same mindset for most of my life, until I was put into the shoes I am in now. It's hard. Trying to throw that love out the window and leave is hard. It was also a misunderstanding, so I overreacted anyway. I do want to thank you all. I expected my post would be like many others, but I got a few replies, and that's it. I got a lot more than that, and most were helpful. Some were jokes, some were just trying to convert me to be straight, and some were trying to gaslight me. Thank you for the actual advice, and I'm sorry for the many people who are related to my struggles. I expected a few, but I got at least 100 DMs talking about their trauma, how it's affected them in their adult lives, and how they think I should move forward. Bittersweet, but I'm glad I wasn't alone in my struggles. For the questions. Are you in therapy? Yes, I'm in individual therapy. Have been for years. I'm also on meds. Mood stabilizers are benzos and antidepressants. Therapy only goes so far. I know the post made me sound kind of psychotic, but I also left all my meds at the apartment, so I was on day eight of clean living and I skipped the last therapy appointment. I never claimed to make good decisions. Is there another woman? No. Why would you get with a bi man when this is pretty common? This is not pretty common IMO, and you're biphobic. I don't have any issues with his sexual orientation. If anything, I like the fact that he's not completely gay. No, I will not elaborate on why. Why didn't you just talk to him? Because if he said there was the woman he was looking at, I would have found the nearest bridge, and you'd off it. What kind of friends would say that shit to you? They're his friends, really. When I moved here in my early 20s, I met him quickly. Less than a year later, when I got here, we went on a date. He introduced me to his friends, and his friends became my friends. I would hang out with them, without my fiancé, and vice versa. In hindsight, I don't think they were being malicious. They've always been nice and welcoming, excluding the one person. They just liked seeing us together and didn't want to see us apart. Almost a decade of seeing a couple, and I can understand they'd want to see us last. I don't have any negative feelings towards them. Are you going to bring up moving? A few people asked after I brought up what he would have to do to get me back immediately. I said move. No, I won't bring it up, I think. I do want to. I'd love to be closer to his family since I don't have any, and I love being around them. They all live in Seattle, and we live in Boston. Don't get to see them much. If I do bring it up, I might wait till the situation clears up completely. Why are you denying who he is? I'm not. He can jerk off to women. I. He can't touch him, though. How can you throw nine years out the window over a question? It's the one question I asked him not to bring up. I thought I made that clear in my post. I can overlook a lot of things, and I do, but that one thing I can't. I still can't. If he was serious about it, I don't think I'd stay. I'm not gonna let him walk outside fuck a woman and come back with cookies in my hand and a smile on my face. Did that feel good, baby? Here's a cookie and some milk. If afar, you may have walked on in your life. That is not me, though. Do role play in the bedroom. He might just want a feminine aspect. I will not upload a picture of myself. It defeats the purpose of making a Trasha account. However, I am 6'4, I weigh 230 ish pounds, I work in a garage, I've spent 15 hours a week in the gym for the last seven years, and I have scars all over my body, with a few on my face. My skin is not soft, and I look like if I meet you in a dark alley, I'll shank you. I'm not feminine. I think he'd laugh if he saw me walk out in lingerie and awake. I would too tbh. That's it for now. I might update after a bit of therapy, but probably not. I'd, I don't think many will care after they read.
but I didn't chastise him. Thank you again for all the actually helpful advice. I didn't expect any of it, but I'm very grateful. Edit. Y'all judged the fuck out of me for not demanding he drop his lifelong best friend. Ike. We talked last night. I brought up my issues, and he said he was leaning toward cutting them off entirely anyway. They're no longer friends. You all can stay in your toxic relationships, making demands and ultimatums. I will not be doing any of that, though. I'm not a doormat. You all genuinely sound bitter. I'm not alone like you are. Ike if I should argue with the wall. AITA for calling my wife fat? I have 34 M, work in a job that is hard on my body. My friends and I are all fit, and we don't have a lot of different body types. My 32 F wife is fat. She's been fat all along. Since I've known her. We went out together and got married when she was fat. She knows she's too fat. She's pretty and fat. It doesn't matter to me if she gains or drops weight. She's already the most beautiful woman in the world, in my opinion. Julie, 28F, one of my co-workers, started to whine that she was too far away to be loved and that fat people don't get loved. Julia isn't too fat. She might be 120 pounds. She works out five times a week but doesn't eat much. That wasn't true, I told her, and my wife was fat. She got very angry and told me I was insulting her by calling my wife fat. She said my wife was beautiful and plump. Carol doesn't like being called curvy. People might use this name instead of calling someone fat because most people think that word is rude. This is what I told Julia. Julia said she would tell my wife that I called her fat. When she looked at her Instagram, she told me that she was telling Carol that I was being mean. I called my wife before she could answer. She was put on speaker and asked if she was fat or curvy. She laughed and said, I hate that curvy stuff. Hey baby, you're fat and pretty. I told her I loved her and thanked her. Julia went crazy as soon as I hit end. She yelled at me that I was beating my wife. When I asked her how, she said it was clear that I was trying to keep her bored and from running away from me by making her accept the word fat. That no woman in her right mind would let her husband call her fat. I showed her a picture of my wife wearing a shirt with BBW on it. By the way, she bought it herself. She yelled at me and hasn't talked to me since. Now, I just got to work today and saw an email from HR asking to meet with me. That's not a big deal to me. I have my wife's blog for fat acceptance, the shirt, and I can call her right away to show proof. Now, though, things are very cold at work, and Julia always looks at me funny when we're together. Other than that, she ignores me. I'm just scratching my head over here. Are you mad that I called my wife fat? Change or edit. I met with HR today at 4 o'clock. It sounds like several co-workers who heard the talk came by HR during the day to give their opinion. They just wanted to hear my side of the story. It matched what everyone else had said as well. I have no idea which member of my crew came by, but I owe them my life. Our very nice person told me it didn't matter if I showed her my wife's blog because it didn't get in the way of my work. A lot of people had agreed with the story. HR said a lot of the same things you all said. I shouldn't have joined the chat after Julia did. I wasn't really being told off, they were just telling me to stay out of other people's business. I'm upset because I believed Julia and I were friends. We talked about rough times with our mental health, the hard work we do, and other heavy topics. We're not going to have those talks anymore. Julia and I will no longer work together to care for patients. They thanked me for my time and told me my part in the probe was over. I feel good about my chances of being okay. Before I left, I told HR that if weight loss and body image shouldn't be talked about, they should think about making that the business policy. We have a task to lose weight, but I think it should be a fitness challenge instead. She said that they would think about it. Okay, that's it. I finished my treatments. We hope that everything works out.
I haven't talked to Julia because I want to stay away from her for a while. Thank you all for making sure I was okay. I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife, to quote Clue.